Well, you know, sometimes when I, uh, I meet somebody and they find out that I'm a pastor, they'll, they ask, well, there's a couple questions they often ask. <laughs> One is, why would you want to do that? But what they often ask is, when did you know or when did you feel this calling that we talk about you know, in ministry? When did you feel called to be a minister? And my stock answer is to go back and think about it. When I really seriously thought about it, I was in my early 20s. But the more I reflect on that, I realize that I can't identify a time when God called me because I think it started way back when I was a child. I think back to uh, growing up going to an Episcopal church and uh, not really paying attention, not really being excited about church. But I still believe that God was speaking to me, that there was a seed that was planted. I remember later when I got into high school, I sang in the concert choir, and every year at the holidays, we uh, performed Handel's Messiah. And I would belt out the words of that song, and I didn't really know what I was saying, what I was singing, but the words were in me. So that later, when I got to the age of around 20, everything sort of clicked and came together so that it was kind of a gradual process. It wasn't like at this moment I felt called, but God was whispering throughout my life. And not everybody's called to be a missionary or a pastor, but I still think that God whispers. God whispers in music. God whispers to us in prayer, in the events of life, in the things that other people say to us. And the challenge is, will we listen? And the calling often starts from the time that we're little. You saw the video about God calling and how we're busy with other things. I love uh, the story of Samuel in the Bible. It's, it's found, uh, there's one particular phase of his life in the first book of Samuel, chapter 3. And Samuel was a special man because of his mom's love. His mother Hannah wanted so much to have a baby, she was unable to conceive, and she prayed to God, Lord, if you give me a child, I'll give him back to you. And what that meant for her was that if God would give her a son, she would literally take him to the temple and give him to the priest and say, here, God gave me this child, and I'm giving him back to God, and I want you to, to raise him up teach him all the things of God. And so that's what happened. That's how Samuel got his start in life. And in chapter 3, we're told that Samuel was there living with Eli, the priest. Eli wasn't such a great priest, by the way. And God had a special word for him, but he used Samuel to speak to the priest. This is, let me read this for you so you can hear the story. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli, the priest. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. But one night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Now, Samuel at this time, we estimate, was about 12 years old. Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am. You called me? But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am. You called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time, and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. Now, there's a lot of things you can say about what happened in this story. Uh, Samuel was an obedient boy. 
Um, God's waking him up. And instead of being cranky and going into Eli and saying, what, what is it? Why are you bothering me? I was sleeping. He says, here I am. You called me? So already he has an eagerness to serve and an openness to be dutiful and to be obedient. Several times God's calling and Eli doesn't realize what's happening. The boy doesn't know what's happening. And finally, after the third time, Eli realizes, well, he's not calling. There's nobody else in the building, so it must be God. And then he tells him, go lay down and this time say, Lord, I'm, I'm listening. How about that? God Almighty wants to speak. And who does he choose to speak to? The priest, the professional, the one with all the training in the background to lead God's people? No. He speaks to a boy because he knows the boy is obedient and the boy is listening. You know, sometimes we think that as adults, we're really the heartbeat of a, of a church or maybe even a school. And uh, we say, well, you know, kids, they're the, they're the church of the future. And that's why we need kids. Uh, sure, what church wouldn't want to be bursting at the seams with children? But they're not only the future. The children are the church of today. As they're with us, they're a part of us. They're a part of the makeup of what we call church. And believe it or not, we can gain from listening to them because God speaks to children even as God speaks to adults. Do you believe that? Well, you're not too sure? It happened for Samuel. And why would God want to speak to children rather than an adult? Because children have gifts that we don't have as big people. There's a story in the Gospels where Jesus' disciples were kind of arguing over who was more important and who was going to sit on Jesus' right hand. Jesus responded by putting a child in front of them and saying, you need to be like this child if you want to enter the kingdom. It's not about me, me. It's not being selfish. It's about the unselfy. And what is it about children? Well, children have an innocence about them. They're trusting. They're enthusiastic about what they believe. Sometimes we start out enthusiastic in the faith journey, and over time, life kind of knocks it out of us. I don't know, could any of us get up here and do some of those dance moves for the Lord? We'd worry about somebody looking at us, and what people would say, or we'd be embarrassed. But kids, they're right there with it, and they express themselves. Yes, children are the future of the church, but they're the today church, too. And they have a lot to offer us if we would listen. We not only minister to them, but we minister with them, along with side of them. And they minister to us. If we will listen, I believe we can hear God speak at times through our children, our own children and the children that are around us. Because of that, because of that innocence and that beauty within and the faithfulness and spirit of obedience that they so often have, God speaks and God uses them. And I'm just so glad that we're a church that loves children, that embraces ministry to children, and I pray that we'll always be a church that does that and a church that listens to children. God, we thank you for the life of this church and the life of the school. Thank you for Judy Orm and Nancy Hester and all the teachers, the students, and their families. We ask your blessing on them. We ask your blessing on all of the uh, young people who participate in the dance troupe and their families, Lord. The, their leaders, we just thank you that there's so much life in children and that you can teach us so much by sharing in that life. May you continue to move in this church and make us ever so aware that we are called not to focus on ourselves, but to be unselfish and to do as you've called us to, to take up our cross and follow you. And in doing that, find real life. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.